Thank you. An award-winning screenwriter becomes devastated to the news of his daughter suffering from an undiagnosed disease with unknown underlying causes. In a relentless pursuit of finding some sort of treatment for his daughter, Feng Yu participates in questionable and cruel activities, which will have unexpected results. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator. You can follow me on Twitter, where you can communicate with me and send me game suggestions. This has been a highly requested game, which I've been meaning to do for a long time. This video will have spoilers ahead. With that in mind, let's begin. Fengyu is sitting in front of TV with a hot delightful home-cooked meal on the table in their iconic 1980s style Taiwanese apartment. His wife, Li Fang, talks to him through the kitchen, mentioning how lucky they are that their little daughter, Mei Shen, tends to stay indoors compared to other kids who spend a lot of time outside, as they don't have time to worry. Li Fang continues that she heard from the principal that their daughter fell and lightly hurt herself at school today, but she reassures her husband that children learn by stumbling and falling, and that he shouldn't scold the principal. The atmosphere slowly becomes more tense as the wife suddenly asks where Mei Shen is, with Feng Yu watching his hands tremble uncontrollably. The screen fades to black and suddenly Feng Yu finds himself in a dark living room, sitting in front of the TV playing white noise. He quickly gets up and leaves the apartment which leads to a long corridor with one door at the end only, having a rabbit symbol on the door displaying the year of the rabbit. As he opens the door, he finds himself back in his living room, having different decoration. Most notably, a divider panel which has been stored in a corner is now set up in front of the door. A portrait painting of the family is shown with Feng Yu's face being faded in darkness. He explores the apartment, and when he opens the door to a room, he's taken into a dark claustrophobic corridor which is raining in, with a red umbrella floating in the air. As he approaches it, it drops and transforms into a red high heel shoe with a demonic female entity appearing behind him. This entity soon disappears with another door appearing at the end of the corridor. This time, the door has a monkey symbol displaying it's now the year of the monkey in 1980, signifying the passage of time every time the protagonist opens the main entry door to the apartment. This time, the apartment is fully empty, with a portrait of a young Li Fang on a table, labeled Li Fang in her glory days, indicating the beginning of the story when Feng Yu and his family moved in to this apartment. He soon finds a trophy for the best screenplay in a box next to Li Fang's portrait, which he decides to put next to his other awards, suggesting that Feng Yu is a renowned and successful screenplay writer. Placing certain items in certain places creates flashback experiences, reminding the seemingly amnesiac protagonist of his past. The bathroom door remains closed when suddenly the lights turn off. The rooms then become filled with candles and a set of hands blindfolding Feng Yu from behind when he gets presented by a lighter as a gift, with his wife Li Fang asking if he likes his gift. Taking the light around, the scenery changes like a scene in a movie, with Feng Yu having a letter written next to the lighter's box, wishing Feng Yu a happy Father's Day. A picture of a child next to the gift box displays that he recently became a father, having Mei Shen as a daughter. He proceeds to leave the house after hearing the doorbell ring, which leads him to another long corridor with only one door at the end, having the year of the tiger symbol this time. The door is familiar, as it's his apartment's main door yet again, leading him back to his own apartment, which has yet again changed, showing a different year of his past life, being 1986. The apartment is neatly furnished now, being very well organized, with a divider panel set up and a few dolls of a man and a woman being placed in different places, representing Feng Yu and Li Fang. Going to Mei Shan's room, he reads a note about birthday grab, which is a traditional celebration for babies when they turn one. 
That's when they present them with many items to predict their future careers. It further explains that much is expected from children by the parents, hence why it's an important tradition. The dolls representing the past actions of Li Fang and Feng Yu are then seen in several numbers watching over Mei Shen, standing outside of her room, being how good and caring parents should be, always watching over their children. The rooms changing with the bathroom door opening, it skips to Mei Shen's birthday, where she wished to be a famous star just like her mother, Li Fang, which transforms the room. <sighs> The TV turns on and displays a competition for singing. The show is cut short when knocks on the door is heard. Leaving the apartment to the long corridor yet again presents Feng Yu with a different environment. At the corner, Feng Yu reads a birthday script which displays how Mei Shen only wanted happiness and contentment. Their life being written in a screenplay style associated to the career of Feng Yu and how he saw things. And so today, they celebrate their child's birthday. My sweet child, what gift would you prefer? Father will grant anything. Child, I am grateful, father, mother, but I do not wish for a gift. I just want our family to be mirthful and content. For the child, such an ordinary moment would be especially cherished. If you'd like to know why, we must talk about that strange illness. Mission was content with what they had, and that will be especially important later as things become different, with the parents wanting something in order to achieve the specific impossible type of happiness they presumed they needed. The end of the corridor yet again has the same entry door, with a symbol of the Year of the Ox being year 1985. Feng Yu finds a notice of illness, which entails a mysterious illness Mei Shen suffers from, which the school clinic noticed, and sent her urgently to hospital to investigate the underlying cause of her difficulty in breathing. As Feng Yu tries to go to her room and check on her, the door is locked with a note saying that he needs to wash his hands before entering. As he proceeds to the bathroom to wash his hands, his hands become bloodied after rinsing them. In fear and shock, he washes them more rapidly, but they only keep getting bloodier until he snaps out of it with his hands being clean again. Going to check on his daughter, he finds the doll representing Mei Shen being in a medical bed under a medical light as if she's being examined. Three needles are lodged in her body, displaying the excruciating and terrifying examination Mei Shen seemingly went through. Pulling the needles out, transforms the room back to normal with a medical diagnostic report, mentioning that the 10-year-old Mei Shen should be further examined with blood work and x-ray to discover the underlying cause of her illness. Traversing into the living room, Feng Yu witnesses in confusion the transformed environment into a familiar hospital room. Reading a script called Protracted Illness uncovers elements in the past leading Feng Yu to stop the medical treatments. Child, father, when will we go down into the big city? Husband, we cannot do under these troubling circumstances. When your illness passes, mother and I will take you anywhere you'd like. Child, father, the needles are painful. This treatment is unbearable. Husband pulls the acupunctural needles out of his child. Wife, how's this going to work? Husband, I have another way. This explains that Mei Shen could not bear the pain of being stuck with needles anymore, displayed in the scene before which caused the father to pull them out and seek other means of treating her. Feng Yi receives a phone call by mentor Hyo, who informs him to go and see her in regards to Mei Shen. Going through the main door, into a dark long corridor, he observes the remnant representation of his daughter in different places, while a song plays in the background. Reaching his apartment door yet again, being the year of rabbit, he sits in front of the TV and continues watching the Rainbow Star stage show. Chika. 
现在总算到了我们儿童组挑战者的表演，一起来欣赏杜美心小朋友为大家带来的《码头姑娘》，掌声欢迎。Ming Shen is seen participating and intending to perform the Lady of the Pier, a song her mother sang in her glory days. Just as she's about to sing, the TV glitches with a portrait of the family being lit up. Behind the picture sits a polytheistic deity statue. When the room transforms into a tiled-up box room without any doors, with the water level slowly rising, as Feng Yu looks up, he observes a corrupted version of his wife watching him. And asking where their daughter is. That's when he submerges underwater and subsequently wakes up in the bathtub filled with red fluid, presumably being blood. He then sees his daughter running, whom he gets up to follow. The door Mei Shen ran into shuts off. With Feng Yu being presented with several doors to travel into, which are said to be fragments of his past life, the first door leads to a ceremony where they sought the help of a guardian deity. In the parents' bedroom, Feng Yu finds a letter from his wife's friend informing her that she always will be welcome to come back to the film industry, as Li Fang recently retired from show business to focus on her family. A news article then quickly shows up on a pen board detailing that Li Fang quit her singing career to devote herself to her family, which took place in 1980. Going through another door, a letter by Li Fang instructs Feng Yu to comfort a sulking Mei Shen as they stopped going to a trip that they planned for. In the room, he finds a school essay written by Mei Shen on how her father is always busy working, not having enough time to spend with her. And that due to her illness, she cannot go out much or to school, wishing she could get well soon so she could do so. A note of a mythical tale of Sigo Guanyin deity then entails how a farmer was instructed by a spirit serpent who offered its flesh and blood in order to cure the farmer's child's illness, to brew the snake's body into a medicinal wine. In a puppet show representing Mei Shen. Feng Yu observes how she grew tired of being locked at home and taking medicine, becoming skeptical of her illness. She proceeds to feed their fish all of her pills, which leads to the fish dying. Mei Shen becomes tired of false promises that she will be taken out after taking her medicine, which makes her refuse to take her medicine. This mysterious undiagnosed illness presumably becomes worse when Mei Shen goes out. Feng Yu then reads a storybook, which Mei Shen always insisted her father to read it to her. It entails a story of a daughter and a father who have a strong relationship, with the daughter saving her father and planting tulips in a field. The book then has an origami tulip flower, which Mei Shen used to enjoy folding with her father, while spending some much-needed quality, yet short time together. An article on the pen board dated 1985 indicates that melancholy is a precursor of anxiety, which is something Mei Shen possibly suffered from as the result of being locked in the house. Going through another door, a painting of the deity Sigo Guanyin is prominently placed in the living room, which is a god of comforting all beings and easing suffering, a god that they started praying to in order to cure Mei Shen. Jumping to another memory through Mei Shen's point of view, while doing her math homework, she listens to her parents fighting for financial difficulties. Li Fang decides to work back in the industry again, which stresses Feng Yu, with both of them having a traditional argument about roles of men and women in a relationship. Ah, 
。可是你是有什么好生气的？我就只是想要帮忙而已啊。钱我会处理，男人的事你不用管。什么叫做男人的事？你算什么男人啊？你整天窝在家里，好手好脚不出去工作，写那么多，还不就赚那几个钱？拜托你现实一点好不好？你那种剧本现在已经没有人想要拍了。好了，不要再扯这些了，我现在不想听。Thank you mentions how spending so much money on the god Guan Yin has treated their daughter's condition with her breathing difficulties, but as the result of this tense argument, Mei Shen has a relapse, falling unconscious due to shortness of breath. As Feng Yu exits the apartment, on a pinboard dated 1986, he reads a gossip article about how his wife's relationship with them became rocky. As Feng Yu is becoming a washed up writer, with his scripts not selling, causing to become more sensitive and stressed, his relationship with Li Fang and his daughter start drifting apart, leading to his wife calling her mother to move out. Traveling to a different apartment, Feng Yu traverses across a plant-decorated apartment with tulips planted everywhere, being a fresh and welcoming change to the usual grim and stained atmospheres. Mei Shen narrates that she's been spending another miserable day on her bed, being sick, until her dad gave her a storybook and taught her how to fold origami tulips, which made her enjoy the day. She mentions that being happy and not stressing about her sickness and measurable days, her condition improved massively and she became healthy again. A script entails how Mei Shen folded many tulip flowers, representing the real flowers in the fragmented memory, when she folds one of her father's rejected scripts, which makes Feng Yu contemplate on how valuable these pieces of papers are to his daughter, despite the world seeing them as garbage. He realizes how spending time with her was quite possibly the most precious thing to her, which she was deprived of, alongside being unable to leave the house. A letter sent to the dean of school reveals the truth that she wasn't locked in the house due to her illness, but because the parents wanted her to be prepared for her singing competitions. They feared that she would catch a cold or the change in weather would worsen her conditions, leading to her failing to sing with all of her might. It was in fact the parents' selfish desire to push their child to become a star, disregarding her need for true happiness. Feng Yu then opens a door which leads him to an apartment filled with wine pots. In there, Mei Shen explains how being alone in the house scared her, making her overthink with negative thoughts, which made her sick, leading to her chest tightening, and as a result, leading to difficulty in breathing. She further explains that this doesn't often happen at school, but when she becomes sad or stressed, she suffers from this undiagnosed illness. This confirms what she suffered from was in fact panic disorder and attacks, something that wasn't well known in 1980. This explains how the deterioration in her psychological health correspondingly deteriorated her physical health, hence why the doctors could not find the source of her illness doing multiple x-rays and blood work. The parents wrongfully trapped her in the house to prevent her from worsening her condition, in order to keep her healthy for competitions, not understanding that unknowingly, they are exacerbating their daughter's health condition, both physically and psychologically. That's why whenever she was happy, folding origami tulips and spending time with her father, her health was improving. Not understanding the root cause of Mei Shen's condition, her father takes more sinister measures in order to treat her. He hires mentor Hyo, who conducts religious rituals based on the Guanyin myths. He takes Mei Shen to this mentor, where at one time, during a visit, Mei Shen's conditions improve, making both Mei Shen and Feng Yu to trust her, despite Li Fang's protests. At the end of a corridor, he reaches a pool of blood with a large serpent inside, mimicking the tail of the farmer in a myth of Guanyin. Looking above, a door is opened which Mei Shen is shoved into the cesspool of mythology, which is revealed to be a snake inside a wine pot. Next to his broken pot lies a script of his wife having a conversation with the child. Wife. 
sweetheart, you're our treasure. You must realize me and father have staked our future on you. When we are old and can no longer work, you will be there to provide for us, right? Child. Understood, mother. Wife. Promise that you'll achieve renown and these valuable items will be yours. Child. I will not take your wish lightly. When I'll grow up, I'll give back what is due. The wife is pleased. She believes the struggle and effort poured into past years will be worth it in the end. This displays the disgusting mindset of Mason parents who thought bringing a child into the world is a financial and life support exchange. The mother pressures Mason to achieve fame and money to repay them for the years she spent carrying her. Having archaic and traditional beliefs, she puts a huge responsibility on Mason's shoulder to take care of them playing mind games on her and manipulating her that it's the child's responsibility to take care of the parents. It's about the expectations and pressure of families on children, destroying their psychological health and sense of identity, being a toy for the parents to do whatever they desire with. <laughs> Yebuchidao After trying to open a door, Feng Yu then gets chased by a monstrous Li Fang, whom he manages to escape getting into an elevator. While in there, he listens to the painful memory of his wife separating from him and berating him on a live show. She explains how he became obsessed with praying to Guan Yin and superstitious, making large donations to mentor Hio. He even went a step further, believing his wife became possessed by demonic entities. Despite the separation, Li Fang is still devoted to her family, mentioning after gaining some money, she would take her family away from that house. Going through the door transports Feng Yu back to the beginning, watching a replay of his daughter's performance. Going to his daughter's room, he remembers her cries to how much she misses her mother, while her small room becomes smaller and smaller, crushing Feng Yu, representing what a claustrophobic prison it felt to be for Mei Shen. Through the perspective of Mei Shen, Feng Yu observes in horror how miserable the life of their daughter had become due to the pressure for her to become a singer. The ever-present, never-ending gaze of the audience and hosts judgment of the judges, and worst of all, the prison she was calling home. Feng Yu finally manages to see his reflection in the mirror to what a monster he has become. The doctor's diagnosis was clear, mentioning that Mei Shen required psychiatric help, which he refused due to traditional agenda that people will look at her as a lunatic, destroying the Du family, shining reputation, instead of focusing on his daughter's needs. He receives a phone call from the mentor Hyo, who asks him to bring Mei Shen to her. Feng Yu becomes so badly manipulated, believing that his daughter is possessed, somehow thinking that this is a better way than seeing a psychiatrist. In a dream, with the guidance of mentor Hyo, Feng Yu passes through a broken bridge with many souls in a river of flames, who are shouting in pain and agony. Mentor Hugh mentions that Feng Yu shouldn't pay mind to them, as they're carrying their own guilt. He proceeds to a darker part of the stream, where Mentor Hugh mentions that sinners suffer their wrongdoings here, and Feng Yu still shouldn't pay any mind. He proceeds to the Tree of Life, where he explores his inner self. He hears a voice of his reasonable self, explaining how one tulip flower gave life to Mei Shen, who valued it with all of her life. In a room, he witnesses many versions of his daughter, 
mentioning how despite the flower being imperfect, they loved it with all of their being, as it was from their father. Thank you. Displaying how unconditional Meishin's love was towards her father. Instead of listening to them, Feng Yu prays a spell which burns these children away. Representing real life, how he dismissed the actual needs and cries of his daughter. In this ritualistic dream, Feng Yu presents gruesome sacrificial offerings such as his eye, tongue and blood to treat his daughter. Back to the real world, a letter explains that this was a spiritual linking ritual called Guan Ling Rite making it possible to travel to the spirit realm with the guidance of a spirit medium, hence Mentor Hyo. Through a tape recording, Feng Yu unveils that Mentor Hyo in fact was nothing but a fraud who drained people of their money in order to perform different spiritual rituals to make their wishes come true. As simple as passing exams, as evil as making someone get divorced, and as deceiving and unsympathizing, as promising a terminally ill man to survive more years. Mentor Hyo promised anything, no matter how noble or evil, as long as she got some money. As a final straw, Feng Yu gets instructed by a psychopathic Hyo to lock Mei Shen in within a bathtub filled with wine, with a snake soaked in for up to seven days. Mentor Hyo insists that she always will be there whenever the deluded Feng Yu needs her. This is directly followed by Feng Yu trying to reach her again when she doesn't answer the calls anymore. Going back to the apartment, he opens the bathroom door, being presented with a blindingly bright white light. In a sad monologue, Meishan mentions how she misses her mother and that she feels better when she folds the tulip flowers a remnant of the happy memories she shared with her father, who has now become insane with praying. She promises herself that she will become cured after folding so many tulips, so one day, her wish to become a famous superstar comes true. Appeasing her parents, so they can only spend time together, the true wish of Mei Shen, which she thought would be only possible after becoming a superstar. All Mei Shen ever wanted was to spend time with her parents. As for her, this was the true meaning of a wish coming true. Her illness would be simply treated if the father just listened to her, let her out and spent time with her. Rather than making the gruesome sacrifices of pulling his eye and tongue out and offering his blood. It was her selfish parents who pressured her to become a superstar and a badly manipulated Mei Shen who didn't know any better as a child thought that would make her parents happy, leading to her own happiness. The parents had traditional views of having a child to support them in the future, believing giving birth to a child is a financial transaction. Hence why they pushed there to become famous and rich, being easier as they had the right connections in the industry. What they didn't consider was the self-identity of their daughter and her well-being. Her being stuck in the house not to catch a cold and ruin her voice caused her to develop some sort of a panic disorder which the parents only worsened by overreacting rather than listening to what Meishan says makes her feel better. They were too busy with their own inner demons, financial difficulties, jealousy and failures as adults to pay any attention to an innocent child who only needed their time and attention to heal mentally and physically. The parents end up separating, with the husband becoming deluded and wasting all of their savings on a phony spirit medium, who ends up instructing a mentally manipulated Feng Yu to kill his own daughter. Locking her in the bathroom for seven days, in a gruesome scene of a bathtub filled with wine and a snake submerged. At the end, witnessing Mei Shen in heaven, her pure soul still welcomes her mentally tormented father to go back home whom she unconditionally loved, despite him torturing her both physically and mentally. The heaven Meishan is within, is finally being able to go outside, something she dreamed of in the entirety of her grim life. Despite achieving this dream, her real heaven was still being with her father and spending time with him, as at the end, she still tells her father to go home together. If you enjoyed this video, you can watch more by clicking on the cards on the screen. 
You can also stay tuned for the latest videos by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host Dar, and as always, have a fantastic day. We'll go home.